Hi, everybody. Zoe is going to try to ignore me. And she's doing an awful job already. Not easy. Um, no. I found myself in a bit of a pickle today, folks. And I'll tell you what the pickle was. I put a lot of books on each prompt for March Mystery Madness in the event that when reading my first book for, let's say, single, because that's what I'm doing right now, um, in reading that first book, it, if it ended up not being mystery enough, I wanted to have backups to go to. So um, I had two books for single right off the bat. So I had Wild by Gil Brewer and Nightfall by David Goodness. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to read the first chapter of each of these books. And um, when I was on Discord talking about this, um, Lizzie Faye was like, oh, you should do a vlog of it. And um, one of those try a chapter things. And after um, playing stupid for a little bit, because I couldn't remember what try a chapter was, um, she's like, yeah, just like look for it on BookTube and you'll find try a chapter videos. And um, I did. And I even saw some that I watched before, which was silly, um, that I couldn't remember what that meant. Um, but anyway, so I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I read the first chapter of Wild, and then I read the first chapter of Nightfall. And then I was just like scrolling through the books on my phone. I passed um, a book called Rafferty by um, Bill S. Ballinger that I was originally going to use for my single prompt, but thought it... Because I try to read very little bits of um, book information because I don't want to know anything. And after reading a very little bit, I decided that that book wouldn't work. But since it's a single title and I was just in this train, I said, screw it. So I read the first chapter of Rafferty as well. Okay, so let's go through this. So the first chapter of Wild, we meet this dude named Lee, who is a private investigator who just moved back to Florida. Um, and Gil Brewer does a good job of having him explain his history to this potential client who ends up being um, the woman he had been with prior to going away in the military. And many years have gone by now, and she's married. And she called him to see if he could talk to her husband to see if they if he would take her back. Because she's afraid to look at Zoe popping up totally kicking me off my train. Um, what's up with you? Am I saying something that's no, funny? <laughs> so it's like normal daily life? Yeah. Okay. So she's ignoring me. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> oh, this is awful. This is why I have to do videos when everybody's asleep. Okay, so anyway, um, she wants him to go talk to her husband because the last time they were together, he threatened to kill her. And she wants to go back, which is bonkers, but um, she's being kind of coy and like 
she's not coming out with everything, it seems like. And he's like, well, how did you even know I was in town? Like, I just literally got back. And she's like, well, I saw your ad in the classified section. And then she's like, wait, it was your dad's ad that I called. And he's like, yeah, my dad just died. Um, I'm taking over the business. He's a private eye. His dad was a private eye. And um, <clears throat> so that's kind of important because as soon as he tells this woman that he's going to try to go talk to her husband, the first thing he does is go out into a phone booth, call the paper, and um, tell them to cancel the classified ad because it apparently had been on an ongoing basis for years. And he had no idea that it was even um, going. So, like, I don't know why he would want to not have any work, you know? Like, it seems like if he's a PI, this would be a... Uh, okay thing like walking into a business that was already up and going but anyway um and that's how the first chapter ends and i was like huh and um like gil brewer like he likes to describe how drop dead gorgeous the girl is that the guy's talking to so everything she does every breath she takes every time she crosses her legs every time she moves her hands like um we're hearing about it and wild this book i thought was going to be like the the book i'm like yeah this is the book i'm gonna read like there's no like like this is it this is the book i'm reading and it was exactly what I would expect from a Gil Brewer book. So then I go to Nightfall by David Goodis. And David Goodis is probably as purple with the prose as you could get with being a hard-boiled crime story. Um, his characters are often not very likable at all, but because of the words used in the narration, um, you kind of have a place in your heart for him, I guess is the best way to put it. And this one opens up with it being super hot, and this guy's a painter, and he's doing some project for some ad agency or something and it's just blistering hot he's in new york um and the sun's down the lights are out and all he wants to do is go out and um be in the city and like go do fun stuff but for some reason he can't do it and he starts having like little flashes of either what he fears will happen or something that has happened that has made him not want to leave the place. Um, but it has to do with like a car crash and a gun and um, somebody getting shot and all this stuff. But it's not said. And it's just like fragments. And then he hears someone say, um, get a cop. And he freaks out. And it turns out that it's the guy next door yelling at his wife to get him a cup of coffee. But they're in New York, so it sounds different when he says cup. But when he said get a cop, he freaked out. And um, he was deciding if he would go out or if he would go back to his painting or if he would just go to sleep. And that was the end of the first chapter. <laughs> And honestly, like, if this was in first person, um, I think I would pick this hands down without any thought about it. But um, it's third person, and so it's kind of flowery, 
very descriptive. Um, the metaphors and the similes and all the fun stuff are brilliant. And it's just beauty when you read it. Um, but for some reason, when... Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But when... Um... No. <laughs> but when the narrator, who is supposed to be, like, invisible to the story, is this has this much personality, um, it kind of draws me away from the book a little bit. So, um, I don't know. And maybe the third-person narration is really the guy who's the painter. Because it seems so bonkers that I don't even know what's going on. And I don't know if we're supposed to know. And if it's anything like, um, oh, what was that goodest book I read last month? Not Blonde on a Street Corner. Oh, I can't remember it. can't remember the title of it. But that one, the main character had a past that he didn't want no one to know about. And you don't find out about it until the last chapter. So if that is like this, then that's kind of a cool little mystery to um, dissect. So then Rafferty comes up. And Rafferty is about a guy who is a journalist who um, spent some time in New York and then went away to the war. And then after the war, stayed in England for um, a bit, working on a novel, um, writing some articles for some papers, and then moved to Italy and did the same thing there. And was coming back to, um, it had been years since he'd been in New York. So he comes back to New York. He's supposed to stay with some friends. They had some kind of emergency, like family emergency they had to take care of. So they just said, we'll be back in like a week, maybe two weeks. Just make yourself at home. Um, you have the place. So he gets there and quickly finds that he's bored out of his mind and has nothing to do. And so he's thinking back, thinks back to the last time he was in New York. And one of the friends he made the last time he was there was this police sergeant named Rafferty who had, um, they were, he was working on some story. And so Rafferty was like his like guy that he would ask questions of and they got really chummy and Rafferty started taking him, um, along with him and his partner Swanson on, um, like they would let him do ride alongs and stuff like that. And they really got along and he's like, you know what? I'm going to hit that dude up and see what he's up to. And he calls the police station and they're like, what are you, some kind of nut? And they hang up on him. And then he calls back and he's like, look, like, I was kind of close with him before I went to the war. Um, I knew him in Swanson, blah, blah, blah. And um, so the guy put Swanson on the phone and he's like, what do you want? And he's like, I just wanted to take you guys out for a drink, you know, like, uh, it's been years. I haven't seen, like, I haven't been in New York since I last saw you. Um, and he's like, well, didn't you hear what happened? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, read a paper. Click. Hangs up on him. So then he goes to the library, um, digs up the old newspapers over the last few years, um, and finds all this stuff that, like, completely horrified him. And he hasn't said what it is, but it gave him nightmares all night. And he's decided that since he is a journalist and he has time to kill... He found out what Rafferty had become, but he wants to find out how he became that. So he's going to use his journalistic skills to try to uncover this thing to, who knows, to figure it out. Um, so 
that was I was pleasantly surprised by that um, because when I first read the little bit of the description of the book that I read, I was not that excited about it. Um, but that really like drew me in and I was like, wow, that's, that's good stuff right there. I'm digging that. So I've decided that I'm just going to read all three of them because they all sound good. So this was a completely pointless procedure and, um, I'm just going to end up reading all three. So that's what happens when you try to do fun stuff. This is why we can't have nice things though. She did good. She ignored me well. <sighs> so anyway, um, that's that. Um, I think I'm going to start with Rafferty. I'm going to finish that. And then I'll go uh, Nightfall. And then I'll go to Wild. But what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to read Rafferty and then move to the next prompt, which is number. I actually have like four books on number, so we'll be doing this again, um, because this was quite exciting for me to um, try to judge books based on their chapters. Um, so we'll be doing this again. So. Let me know what you're reading down below for single for the March Mystery of Madness title. Um, and I will... <laughs> Dude, you are so distracting. Slimer. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you're just really distracting. Um, but, uh, yeah, so let me know down below. Bye. Oh, join the Discord.